Okay, let's take a numerical derivative. Now, what is a numerical derivative? So, I assume that you have an idea about what a derivative is, but imagine that instead of a function, I have data. So I don't, I don't have, I don't have, I just have these data points right here. So this is, let's say, uh, y and x, or you can say this is f of x, I guess, f of x and x, and these are data points. So this is data point number, let's call that 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I can't do a calculus uh, derivative of a function if I don't actually have a function. Yeah, you could fit a function to this and take the derivative of the function but I want to take the derivative of the data. And I in this particular case, there's a lot of ways to do this, but I'm going to imagine that I am creating these points one at a time. So once I have these, this point three, I don't have point four yet, but I still want to find the derivative. And that's different than if I already have all the data. Okay. So, and imagine one case this, this could be, uh, this could happen with is, let's say I'm modeling the motion and I'm getting X as a function of time uh, and it's moving along and I want to take the, find the X velocity which I probably used to find x, but whatever. It could be temperature versus time, and I want to find out how fast things, I actually have a, a, a temperature recorder that records the temperature, and I want to find the rate of change of the temperature. So if I knew the function uh, as an analytical function, the derivative we can define is this, the limit as delta x goes to zero of f of x plus delta x, right? So it's, it's this plus uh, the function up here divided by the the difference between those. So it's really, it's really the slope between those two lines. So if I take this, it's going to be f of x plus delta x. This is f of x. So that's the difference between those two. And this is delta x the thing over here. So that's the slope between those two lines. Now, if we use this definition, you're actually using the next x to find that, which is great because if I start right here, I can use the next x. Okay. But if I'm collecting data over time, I can't use the next one because I don't have it. So I'm actually going to use a slightly different form for the derivative. Let's say f, I'm called f prime of x is going to be equal to, uh, and let's just, let's just find the derivative at x1. I'm going to say it's going to be equal to uh, f of x1, which I actually don't have a function, it's just a data point, uh, minus f of x0, all of that over delta x. Oops. So it's really, I'm, for this data point, I'm using the one before it. So I'm taking the change in the f divided by the change in x, and that's my slope. And so if I have data points, I can do that. Now there is one problem. Let's say I find this uh, f prime right there. I can do it 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 right there because I used one before it. But I can't find the derivative right there because I need two data points. So if, if I start right here, I have a time and I have a temperature, I can't find the derivative. So I'm going to have to wait to the next one. Okay, so what, what I want to do, you could do this with actual real data, but I want to do this with, um, I'm going to generate the data using a function. That way we can check and see if it works. So I'm going to plot uh, this. I'm going to say y equals cosine of x. I'm going to plot that, and then I'm going to take the derivative of that. And there is a, a, a couple tricks we need to do that. Uh, well, let's just go ahead and do that. And then also one thing, I am assuming that my delta x's are all the same, although they don't have to be uh, in real data. That may not be the case. Okay, let's switch over to Python. Here we are. Uh, Python, uh, I'm using uh, WebVPython in Trinket. I'm going to give you the code down below uh, so that you can have that to play with, and you should play with it. Uh, okay, so let's just get started. Let's first make a graph of cosine x. I'm going to make this bigger so you can see a little bit better. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is make a graph. So I'm going to, I'm going to put the labels on it. G1 uh, equals a graph. Uh, I'm not going to give it a title. I'm just going to give it an x title uh, equals x. I know that's dumb. And a y title equals y. I'm also going to give it a width of 500 and a height of 250, just so it fits better in the in the screen capture here. Now I want to plot a function, and I'm just going to call it f1, and it's going to be g curve. G curve is a is a type of thing in GlowScript that makes a plot on that graph. So I, I do need to give it a color. I don't actually don't need to give it a color. I am going to give it a color. Color, 
equals color dot blue. Okay, so now I need to start with my value of x. I'm really just plotting cosine x. So I'm going to say x equals 0, dx, how far between each one? I'm going to say 0 0.01. And then while x is less than 5, I'm just picking a number. 5, do the following. Uh, the first is calculate y. So y equals cosine x. And that's just the function I want to plot. And then I'm going to plot a data point. Uh, f1.plot. If you need help with plotting or graphing, I have all sorts of tutorials. Just let me know in the comment below and I'll give you a link to that. Uh, otherwise, I forget to link it. Uh, but if you, have, if you have comments on any of this stuff, I probably have a video to help you out with something. So I'm going to plot x versus y. Uh, now what I need to do is to move to the next x value. So I'm going to say x equals x plus dx. And I think that should do it. Sometimes I make mistakes. Let's just run it and see what happens. Okay, so there you go. Let's save this. Numerical derivative, derivative example. Save. And then run it again, just so you can see. That's, that's a nice graph. Everything looks fine. Everything's happy. Okay, so now I need to make another graph so I can plot the derivative and then I will show it show you then how to save that data for both of those so that if you want to reuse them uh, so I'm gonna say f2 equals g curve and this is gonna be the derivative color equals color dot red so we can tell the two apart now I I can't I need to have one data point first so I'm gonna actually calculate one data point before I get to the loop then when I'm in the loop I can always use my old data point so I'm gonna say this um, y equals cosine x. Now, actually, I'm going to say old y. And then I'm going to say oldie. Oldie is old y. And then I'm going to say x equals x plus dx. So what I need to do, one of the important things right down here is line 13. I keep changing the value of y. So I never know what the y before was because I'm not saving all these as a list. Uh, and in fact, I think I think I'm not, I'll, I'll show you how to save the derivative this way, and then I'll show you in a later video how to take the derivative of the data if you already have all the data. But in this case, I'm assuming you don't have all the data. So once I change y, I don't know what the old value was. So this way, I do know what the old value was. I'm going to call the old value old y. Okay. So I didn't, I didn't plot it because I don't really care about that. I just have old y. And, and then doing this way, you won't really notice anything different in the graph. It will start a little, one one hundredth of a second later, but other than that, it should look the same. Okay. So now when I get down here, I calculate y, and I know old y, so I can calculate the derivative. Let's go ahead and calculate the derivative. I'm going to call this f dot. Uh, dot we use the dot notation uh, for derivatives as the derivative. And that's just going to be equal to the, the y value, so the, which I just calculated y minus the old value of f which is old y and then divide by the the width of the interval which is dx and now that's f dot now i can plot that uh, f2 dot plot x and f dot that's the derivative now i need to set my oh, i'm going to move up to the next value but i want to set my old y old y equal to y. So now I'm going to move I'm going to move my y forward. I need to move my old y forward too. So now I always have a, the previous version of the y. And I think this will work. Let's see if I should save it. Shouldn't I save it? Okay, now let's run it. And there you go. Okay, so does this work? Well, it it looks like it. But let's just think let's just look at this really quickly. Up here, uh, the graph is is horizontal the slope is horizontal, so the slope should be zero. And down here, you see the slope is zero. Right here, where it crosses the origin, the slope is at a maximum, right? Because it's as steep as it will get. And if it's a negative slope, and you can see down here, you have a negative slope. And then it starts having more and more positive slope, so the curve back up, and it does indeed work. If you want to, you could uh, show that this is negative sign. I guess I should do that. Okay, let's just double check. So we know if I take the derivative of cosine x, I get negative sine x. So let's say f3 equals g curve, color equals color dot green, not green. No, it's green. 
uh, and then I can plot that. So let's just say, uh, let's call this y2 equals negative sine of x. And then down here, I'm going to plot that. So f3 dot plot x y2. And let's see what happens. And you will see that uh, the, it's right on top of that graph. You can't even, you can kind of see it looks weird because there's a red and green there. Uh, in fact, if I don't plot this numerical derivative, then you can see that it's just green. And then if I don't plot uh, this, you can see it's just red. There you go. So it does indeed work. Now I will show you one thing because this could be important. Let's say that you're collecting data and you want to save this derivative data. Uh, you can save it as a list, one thing that you could do. So let's make an empty list uh, and call that. And I guess I should save the ordered pair. You could do it either way. I'm going to do it both ways. So let's say um, f dot data equals an empty list. And then down here, whenever I calculate f dot, I just need to add it to that list. f dot data equals f dot data plus f dot. Uh, and I'm going to move this to a 0.1 time step just so we don't have so much data. And then I can print that. Let's print out that list. Print f dot data, just so you can see what all the derivatives are. And there they all are. Okay. Um, now, if I if I I could find the x values, because I could say f dot the first f dot is just f dot data zero. I could just print that one out just as that first one, uh, and I could do that for any of them. Now, what if you can't remember what the x values is? Because I could go back and figure out what the x value is based on the number. But I could save it as a as an ordered pair. So I could actually save this. I could say f dot data equals uh, this as a list of x f dot like that and now when i print it out it'll give me the x value too and it's 0.1 right because remember i i had to move on forward so then you have all that data and you can do other stuff with it later if you needed to save it imagine that you're collecting temperature data and that's that's that so that's how you take a numerical derivative um, i'm going to give you this code down below if you have any questions just let me know and here i am okay